Welcome to episode 11. Since the last episode, I've done a lot of cabling. So we actually reached the point now where potentially I could connect this to a 48 volt battery. Use the throttle and we should see some movement here. So let me just go through the cabling so far and see if anyone spots any mistakes before we connect it to a, uh, a battery. Let's check. A bit about some new parts designed that is about to go on the board. Uh, if you imagine the battery here, uh, or two batteries actually, it's built for, for two separate ones. Uh, you will have, have a 200 amp DC breaker, a marine breaker that goes into a isolation switch for both the positive and the negative. And then that goes up to become one. So I just need to use one cable uh, to run it up to the uh, motor controller which will then go into two isolation switch switches and then the motor controllers one for each and obviously in between here will be the main fuse board so this is a simplified kind of version just to allow me to uh, to run the the motors the uh, three-way ridge is just a platform printed and some bolts sticking up and underneath there is comes some hexagon plastic lids just to make sure there's no connection from the bolts to whatever it's mounted to then there is a six millimeter copper bar to make sure that there is a connection and then on top of that there is a lid and all of this has been designed and 3d printed so hopefully that should do the trick You would think that a Pella drill uh, would be uh, uh, the first tool you would invest in to make sure that you can drill straight and in the right place, but uh, I'll, uh, I'll use what I got. The isolation switches are off the shelf isolation switches and I've designed a box to uh, host them which is literally just a 3D printed box that hosts these two and then a lid uh, at the back of the box to make sure that there is no connection between whatever you mount it to and the actual cables themselves. Once again, a big thank you to Marian for uh, helping in designing the uh, isolation switch boxes, as well as the uh, 3D switch boxes and, and bases. These are just uh, standard DC 200 amp marine trip switches that you can manually uh, reset if they ever go off. Cable is just uh, standard auto wire cable, 35 millimeter 2, 240 amp rated. And the cable shoes 
are obviously 35mm to hyphen 8 as in the 8 is the bolt size M8. Since the last episode I've done some cabling work so I thought I'd just walk you through what's been done so far. We're getting closer to actually being able to connect this to a 48 volt battery and hopefully see something spin. So the entry point are these uh, trip switches, 200 amp DC trip switches and I have catered for a primary battery and a secondary battery so that when I'm on the boat I will probably first install a primary battery and if I later on need a secondary battery I have all the cabling pulled up. So these two goes to the primary and later on if I need it I can use these two for the secondary battery. So the cables goes up to a set of isolated switches and I put them close to the battery so that I can isolate a battery if I like to, if I need to work on it and still keep the rest of the system going. That goes up to the um, three-way splits that I created and that then later on goes behind here and it comes up and comes in this way. So up here I have a another 175 amp fuse and that's the fuse that I will have on the main switchboard and I put that to the working amperage that I'm gonna work with. I will never go over 175 amps in my calculations on how much wattage I will be using. And if I do, I want this one to trip. And if anything fails or if that doesn't trip, the actual 200 amp DC fuse should trip instead. So that then comes into another split. Then, then that's the live that comes down to another set of isolation switches so that I can disconnect one of the motors very simply if I want to by just turning these off and that is for mainly maintenance. You have the same kind of cables coming in from the negative side and then that splits out into one coming into the motor controller, that's the negative, and the positive or the live first goes into the DC contactor and then from the DC contactor into the actual motor controller. I'm not going to go into the specifics of the actual rest of the cables because it's a little bit premature. I think I have connected this correctly, but I'm going to check with Golden Motors just to be absolutely sure before I share the last bit of a connection diagram of how I connected this. So I will leave that for later. There's a couple of cables which I'm not 100% sure of. I printed a couple of more of these uh, holders so I can connect some of the points. This is a holder I printed for, for two, two-way switch. There's a couple more here for a three-way switch. The buck converters are now connected to the 12 volt fuse boards so that I can keep on connecting any 12 volt appliances to, to these boxes. These are the two cables that I'm not 100% sure. Uh, it's the throttle that goes to the reverse on the motor controller. So right now I'm going from red to silver and black to brown. And I've made this contact myself because it was the wrong contact, unfortunately, when I received it. So I had to put one on myself and I'm not 100% confident that I got that cabling right. So I've uh, reached out to Gold Motors. It is bank holiday in China right now. So they promised to get back to me as soon as that bank holiday is uh, over. In short, live and negative comes in. Negative goes to the uh, motor controller directly. The live goes to the DC contactor and then on the other side you have another cable from the DC contactor going into the motor controller. On the DC contactor you have a little uh, silver cable that goes into what I believe is the key ignition cable for this, uh, for this port. So the idea is that when we press this button on the uh, on the throttle 
that you then send a little bit of, I think maybe 12 volts into here, which basically makes sure that this coil in here creates a connection and therefore supplies the, the electricity needed for the motor controller. Then from this side, which I guess is also the uh, uh, a low voltage, well, it's still 48 volts, but uh, it's, it's aimed to be able to, to take uh, load from here as well. And that's the one that goes into the buck converter. And then from the buck converter that goes into the 12 volt, uh, 12 volt fuse box. You have the, uh, the throttle that goes into the split cable that splits into two. So one on each side of the remote controller. So one goes to throttle and one goes to brake. Uh, sorry, throttle and rev. Just to make sure that I can go forward and backwards. There's loads of other stuff on here, which is more related to cars and motorcycles. So for a boat, I guess the only thing needed will be throttle and rev. And so far, I guess that's it. So the idea is that if I connect some 48 volt to this, hopefully it won't burn down, but instead I should be able to use the throttle and these little ones should move. So that's in theory. As always, there are people out there that have way more experience of this than I do. If anything of this looks crazy, or you would do it differently, or if you have any ideas around anything of this, then uh, feel free to drop a comment in the uh, comment section. Every piece of uh, feedback is highly appreciated and I will respond uh, as quickly as I can. Thank you for watching episode 11. Uh, if you are new to this channel and you want to see more, uh, you will find a, an episode up here somewhere where you can see it from, from the beginning. And if you're interested in boat building, then you will find an episode up here somewhere because this uh, is built purposely for a boat I'm building in parallel with this. If you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment uh, in the comments and I will respond. And if you want to see more, feel free to subscribe and I'll see you next time. Thank you.